Okay, um, again, M1, January 2018. This is question number eight, continued. Then do part B, um, connected particles. Now, we worked out from the previous part of the question that the acceleration was 3.763. Uh, we didn't actually have to use that in the last part of the question, but that's going to help us in this question. And we also worked out that the tension in the string was 30.2 newtons. Okay, just in case we need that, I'll write that down there. Okay, now, after falling for 1.5 seconds, the block B hits the ground and is immediately brought to rest. So block B falls for 1.5 seconds, okay, until it hits the ground. Okay, and it's immediately brought to rest. Okay, in its subsequent motion, A does not reach the pulley. Find the speed of B at the instant that it hits the ground. Okay, now, at the instant when B hits the ground, we're going to find its, its, its speed. Okay, we know that in the beginning, um, it was at rest. So let's use our SUVA equations and see if that will help us, because it has a constant acceleration um, during the time it's falling of 3.763. So we don't know the distance is falled. We know the initial speed was zero, and we know the final speed was three. Uh, no, final speed is what we have to find, sorry. Okay. So that's V. Now, acceleration is the acceleration due, you know, that we found in the first part of the question, which is 3.763. I found the acceleration in order to find the tension. All right, so I already found part of it, that, that part of the answer, so that's fine. Then it's T. It says it tells us 1.5 seconds it's falling for. So we've got to have an equation with V, U, A, and T. Well, that's one of the most... Simple ones, V equals U plus A T. So V is equal to U, which is zero, plus A, which is 3.763 times F 1.5 seconds. Okay, so you just take your answer 3.763. And you multiply by 1.5. That gives you an answer, which is 5.6445. 5. 5.6445. 5. So we can say to 3SF, 5.65 meters per second is the speed of particle B at the instant that it hits the ground. Okay? Now, Part C, find the total distance moved up the plane by A before it comes to instantaneous rest. So there's two things, the total distance. First, we're going to find the, the distance it's traveled before it hits the ground, before B hits the ground, because there's going to be two different, um, you know, um, two different um, resultant forces acting on, on A. One is going to be from the tension minus the, the component of the weight, Okay, but once B hits the ground, there will be no tension in the string. Okay, because the string will become, you know, light. B's hit the ground, nothing's pulling it down. Nothing's pulling this up now. Okay, and it says B hits the ground, it doesn't rebound, so it just hits the ground and stops. So A will now not have any tension. Okay, so there'll be two parts to this. The first part is the distance traveled, the distance before B hits the ground. So the distance before B hits the ground. So before B hits the ground. And the second part will be, okay, the distance traveled after B hits the ground. So let's try, so let's start with the distance before it hits the ground. Now before it hits the ground, we're going to again use SUVAT. We have SUVAT. Okay, now. We have to find the distance. We know the initial velocity was zero. That's when it's, it was released from rest. Now the final velocity is going to be the same velocity that uh, B was traveling when it, hit the, when it hit the ground because they're connected particles. They're moving at the same um, speeds. Okay, so the speed will be the same. So this will be five point. Let me write it in some more accurate form. Six four four five. Six four four five. The acceleration is the, of course the same acceleration. Okay, as before, when the string is tight, okay, 3.763.
and the time is the same time, 1.5 seconds. Okay, it's the same time. That's the time at which B hits the ground after being released. That's the same time. So we need to find S. Okay, so if we think about this, we've got the acceleration, we've got the time, we've got the initial speed, we've got everything here. So we can use um, S equals UT plus a half AT squared. We can use uh, V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. Yeah, we could use, mm, yeah, V squared equals U squared plus 2A. Yes, we could use that. We could use this, that the distance is the um, the average speed times the time. Okay, so we could even use that. We could say S is equal to U plus V over 2 times T. All of those would work. But let's use this one, U plus V over 2. Okay, so you're going to have 0 plus 5.6445 divided by 2 times 1.5 okay see what that gives us so you have that sort of calculator divide that by 2 and then multiply by 1.5 That's 4.233 meters. 4.233. 4.233 meters. Okay, that's the distance traveled before the the bee hits the ground. So now what we've got to do is we've got to find the distance traveled, the distance traveled by A after. B hits the ground. Okay, now, what we've got to understand is after B hits the ground, this is gone. There's no tension. Right? There's no more tension. And the only force is acting upon A, okay, is this downward force here. Okay? So we can say um, the resultant force because it's still moving upwards, is minus, you see, F equals MA, F equals MA, so the resultant force is basically minus 3G, hold on a second, okay, so now we have F equals MA, so the, the, the force acting downwards, we're taking upwards positive because it's moving upwards, but the force, the resultant force acting downwards is 3G sine 40 equals MA, so we can say negative, 3g sine 40, negative 3g sine 40, lagging here, equals ma, which is 3 times a. So now we can work out what a is. So let's just write that down here. So negative 3g sine 40. So you've got negative 3g times sine 40 is equal to ma, which was 3 times a. So from this, we can work out what A, the acceleration, the new acceleration that's not, that's a, A is subjected to after B has hit the ground, after the tension has been removed from the situation. So it's going to be negative, of course, deceleration. This going to, of course, it will slow down. 3 times 9.8 times sine 40 divided by um, 3. Okay, so the threes will cancel out. So left with 9.8 sine 40. So A is equal to 9.8 sine 40. Okay, let me just... A is equal to 9.8 sine 40. So you have 9.8 times sine 40. 9.8 times sine 40 degrees. Yes, it is in degrees, yes. So you end up with... 6.2993 the acceleration is negative 6.2993 meters per second squared okay so now we're going to use the SUVAT equations to work out how far this has traveled so we have s which we need to find u 
Now the initial velocity in this new situation is the same as the final velocity in the original situation. Okay, so we know the final velocity was 5.6445. Okay, that was the final velocity of B when it hit the ground. So that's the initial velocity, velocity now when um, A is starting. So if you think about it, let's just go back to the diagram. When B hits the ground, okay, it's traveling at a particular speed which we found, which is 5.65 meters per second. That's the same speed that A will be traveling at at the point when the string no longer pulls. So now we're looking at a new situation. Okay, the new situation is when uh, the string is no longer pulling A. Okay, so its initial velocity at that point will be the same as 5.6. 445, right? So that's where we got 5.6445 from. 445. The pen's lagging now. Um, now V is equal to zero because you're trying to find the, the distance it's traveled before it comes to rest. So of course, the final velocity has to be zero. The acceleration is, don't forget the negative, it's very important, otherwise it won't work. Negative 6.2993. Okay, so the acceleration negative 6.2993. Okay, and the time, okay, we don't know what the time is because we don't know how long it takes for it to come to rest. It doesn't tell us that, does it? No, nope. so we're going to deal, be dealing with these things. So we want to find S. So you got S equals UT plus a half AT squared. That won't help us, we don't know T. We've got v squared equals u squared plus 2as. It looks like that's the one we're going to use. So let's use v squared equals u squared plus 2as. So we'll, if we use the formula v squared equals u squared plus 2as, all right, s is what we have to find. So you've got v squared minus, that's v squared minus u squared divided by 2a. Okay, and that will give us what S is. So let's work out what it is here. S equals V squared, which is 0, minus U squared, which is minus 5.6445 squared over 2A, S, 2A sorry, which is 2 times negative 6.2993. Okay, so we work that out now. So let's make that negative. Sorry. Okay, that's negative. Let's get to this patch. Oh, computer is lagging right now. So you're going to have your fraction. Okay, you're going to have negative, the sustaining, is, it's like the, you're not squaring the negative here, it's minus u squared, so you're going to square u and write the negative in front of it, so there's no problem with that. So 5.6445, 445 squared, divided by 2 times negative 62993, 6. Two nine nine. Sorry, six point two. This is lagging really bad. Six point two nine nine three nine nine. Three. Okay. Um, yep. Yeah. Equals. And there we have our answer: two point five three. Two point five three meters. Two point five three meters. So that's the distance traveled after B hits the ground. So the total distance. Okay. So the total will be the sum of the distance traveled before it hits the ground, which is 4.233. 4.233. 4 
point two three three plus two point five what was the calculation five three five two nine two point five two nine let's write it like this and then we'll have it at the end two point five two nine Okay, so you got 4.233 plus 4.233. 11. Okay. And you get your answer. 36.5. So 6.76 meters, 6.76 meters, that's to 3 SF. You can write it as 6.8 if you want, as we use G in this calculation, but it's perfectly fine to leave it to 3 SF, okay? So there we have the answer to question number 8. Thank you for watching.